Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to For the Love of Comics. Some weeks ago I asked you, the viewers, if I should make my recent reads and new acquisitions videos into a monthly feature. Many of you said yes. So here in the last video for this month, I'm going to go over some of my most recent acquisitions. These are unfortunately for the most not recent reads. It's just been a very busy month and plus most of these books arrived in the last seven days or so. So I haven't gotten to read almost any of them. So I'd like to share with you what I'm planning to read in the upcoming weeks and maybe you can give me some suggestions on what I should go with first. So let's get started. The first book I have here is actually a replacement. The Adventures of Hergé is a terrific comic which tells the story of the creator of Tintin as a Tintin styled adventure. And what I like most about it is this Shakespeare in love sort of approach where Hergé's life is half fictionalized, half based on fact and biography. And you see a lot of elements around him that are later incorporated into the Tintin stories. It's a wonderful book. I've I'd owned it for many years, but recently I couldn't find it anywhere. And after many months of searching, I finally went ahead and got myself a replacement copy. I think this is a good time for a reread of The Adventures of Hergé. Highly recommended for Tintin fans and those who don't mind a slightly different approach to biography. Next up, we have Berlin, which I mentioned in my video of what books I'm looking forward to in 2019 as a book that came out last year but I still had to get my hands on. I finally decided to go for the big all-in-one hardcover instead of the third volume in paperback to go with my other two paperbacks and I think what that means is I'm going to start from the beginning to catch up on the things that it's been a while since I've read. Berlin is a terrific story set in the Weimar Republic with a fantastic cast of characters and although it's been I think a couple of decades in the making it feels extremely timely. Then we have a book I've just recently heard about, Kill My Mother by Jules Pfeiffer. Jules Pfeiffer is an award-winning screenwriter, playwright, and artist, and this is his debut graphic novel. It's apparently a noir tale of four or five women and murder and betrayal with an extremely wide and colorful cast of characters. The pages that I'd seen were intriguing to say the least. The style looks fantastic. The very first page is a list of influences that he credits Milton Caniff, Will Eisner, Hammett, Chandler and Kane, John Huston, Billy Wilder, Howard Hawks and Joan Z. Holden. Now that's a list to tempt you. Then we have two volumes of Green Manor by Bodart and Vellman, Volume 1, Assassins and Gentlemen, and Volume 2, The Inconvenience of Being Dead. I know very little about these books other than the fact that they're written by Vellman, who I'm a fan of, and you would have seen some books of his on Shelf 7 and maybe Shelf 3. But being set in Victorian England and with an art style that I find quite pleasing with the flat colors and the clear line, and being a manor house murder mystery sort of thing, those are all elements that are more than enough to get me to pick up these two volumes. Also arrived a couple of weeks ago was Frankenstein by Junji Ito. I've recently discovered Junji Ito only last year, but I am a big fan of his horror manga. I've read two or three books of his that you'll see in the next shelf video that I post. And when I heard that he had adapted Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, I was eagerly awaiting the English translation. It's here in this wonderful hardcover from Viz Media, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how he's adapted what I consider one of the greatest novels of all time. Also arrived last week is On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden, her latest novel. This is by far the longest Tilly Walden work I've encountered. I talked a little bit about Spinning when we looked at Shelf 3, which I thought was a terrific book. And this has gotten some fantastic reviews. I've read about 8 or 10 pages of this. From what I can tell, it's science fiction, but not in the most traditionally expected ways. I didn't pick this up earlier because I was trying to decide between the UK edition and the US edition because they have different covers. The US edition is published by First Second, who I'm a big fan of, but in the end I prefer this cover just a little bit more. And the final selection isn't really comics, it's an art book, The Art of Ponyo by Hayao Miyazaki. I got this as a present for my wife who loves this movie and I love it too. And the fact that it's Miyazaki and it's full of Miyazaki's sketches and watercolors is what pushed me over the edge. I'm usually very wary about art books, but this is a present for my wife and I'm glad to have it in the house under that excuse. The other reason why I picked this up is that I got a really good deal on this and the art of Princess Mononoke, the art of Spirited Away, and the art of The Wind Rises. 
all by Hayao Miyazaki. I love every one of these movies and the artwork in them, which is why I made an exception to my no art book rule. I know that I'm not going to be reading these cover to cover and they really are going to function more like coffee table books, but they're just so beautiful. And Miyazaki is a comic book artist because he did Nausicaa, which is a great comic. So I feel at least partially justified. So there you have it, a very quick look at a whole bunch of new acquisitions, which I now have to find the time to read. I used to be concerned about having books that I haven't yet gotten to, but now I know that it's going to be a lifelong pursuit. So I no longer worry about it. I buy the books that I want to at the time that I can, when I can afford them, and I'll find the time for them eventually. Let me know if you'd like a closer look at any of these. I'd love to know what it is that you're reading or looking forward to reading. Let me know along with any questions or suggestions you may have in the comments below. This has been For the Love of Comics. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.